Okay, we're on Vedastats 2, Chapter 5, which has the rather catchy name, Estimation, Confidence Intervals, and Tests Using a Normal Distribution. So because that name is so, I think, just too long, it kind of is hard to remember what's in this chapter, what I've actually done is I've split this chapter into three sections, really to help us understand the content better and to see kind of where it sits more broadly in the, the whole of the module that we've got here. So I'm going to call it Chapter 5A. I'm still going to do it as part of this whole playlist, which is about estimators. Chapter 5b introduces something called confidence intervals which will get used throughout the rest of the textbook and then chapter 5c which are tests for normal distributions kind of extending straight from the things that you'll have been doing in further stats one but also some of the stuff in stats two just from uh, normal maths as well now like i've said they are all linked and they do belong together but I just think seeing them separated should help with our understanding across the rest of the course, because if I said, oh, yeah, chapter five, and it's like, yeah, it's estimation, confidence intervals and tests using a normal distribution, it's kind of hard to remember what goes in that bit. So these sort of sub chapter titles, I think, will help us remember where the content belongs. And so the first thing we're going to have a look at is estimators. Now, when you look at my exam question document that has sorted all the um, questions into different topics, this chapter is going to cover the two following sections, the estimators section, which I'm calling 5A. And then 5B and 5C are all going to be things to do with the normal distribution tests. And I'm using Z here. Z gets used often for the standard normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And that's just going to be all of those questions in that kind of orange um, section in that document that we have. So let's get started with estimators. And before we even talk about estimators, I want to do a bit of a language clarification that we have here, because we're going to be thinking about these two different terms that we have. Now, a population parameter versus a sample statistic, or more commonly, we would just call this a statistic. But the reason I've put sample in front of it is because we've got population parameter, both beginning with a P, and sample statistic, both beginning with S, and statistics are associated with samples. Anyway, let's actually read what these things are that we've got here. So a population parameter is a true measure of the entire population. And remember when we talk about population, we're not saying like, oh, the population of the UK, we're talking about the entire thing that we're studying. So whether we wanted to know about like, I don't know, the average weight of fish in a lake, the population of fish would be um, the thing that we're referring to, all of them. And those population parameters would be like the mean or the standard deviation, things that are just completely true about that. They don't, they don't vary at all for when you're taking those measurements. Now, we've weirdly, we use the word statistic because it's called like further stats and statistics. So we use this word, but now we're actually going to use it in its sort of truest meaning and its specific kind of definition. So a statistic is a measure of a sample that is taken from a population. So that could be x bar, x bar, or even this variable here that we've got here, which is called s. Now, I'll really quickly just talk to you about these things. This, when we have a capital letter, is when it's sort of referring to something that hasn't actually been picked yet. Um, it's kind of like the general mean of the sample. If we have a lowercase letter, which I discussed at the beginning of the previous playlist, lowercase letters are like a particular version of it. So capital X bar here is just talking about the mean of the sample in general. A lowercase X bar is talking about a specific mean of a sample. So I don't know, this would be three whereas this is sort of a general one. And S, you're going to learn, is a different version of the standard deviation, which is di different to sigma, and that's going to pop up about partway through this playlist that we've got. Now, if we take a good sample and we calculate its statistics, in other words, things like its averages or its standard deviations, we can get a good idea of the true population parameters. So, for example, we might take a sample of 30 students from year 13 and measure their heights, perform a calculation to get a statistic, which in this case could be the mean, and we can use this to make an assumption about the population parameter mu. So we're just going to start getting used to this language that these kind of Greek letters, mu and sigma, are referring to the whole population and that we're going to be using these kinds of letters for a statistic which is taken from a sample. And I guess this is kind of intuitive in some ways, or not intuitive, but if we had all of year 13, and let's say we were at a huge sixth form college that had thousands of students, we probably don't have the time or we don't want to waste that amount of time or money measuring everyone's heights. 
So we want to be able to find shortcuts by like taking a sample and finding a statistic associated with them to give us an idea about the population parameter. And we're going to talk about how that will work with the mean, but we're also going to talk about how that will work with the standard deviation and the variance, because some are intuitive and then some are slightly less intuitive. And so the final point that we're going to make here is that a statistic must only be in terms of x, i, and no population parameters at all. Well, that makes sense that a statistic can't have anything to do with the population parameters because they're clearly two different things that we're defining here. When we say x, i, x with a little i is just saying it's just some observation from the distribution that we have here. So it is just some observation from it. If I had it with a lowercase x, so if I had it as like lowercase x, i, that would be like a specific one. So I might say, oh, the height was uh, like 180 centimeters for someone in year 13. This one is just saying this is the height of someone in year 13. It doesn't have like a specific kind of meaning to it. Um, and as you remember, the little part in the corner here is saying whether it's like the first, the second, the third, I use letter I just to show it's kind of like a general one that we've got. So as I've said, this is kind of what the chapter is going to look like. We're going to be doing estimators and then exam questions on estimators because they really sit as like a separate topic in terms of the way that these things are assessed. So we're going to very quickly look at these things that we've got here and we're going to decide whether they are statistics or not. So we have a sample of x1, x2, x3, all the way up to xn. So in other words, x um, n observations have been taken from a population with unknown parameters mu and sigma. In other words, the mean is mu and the, the variance is sigma squared. Are the following statistics or not? And maybe we can even think what they are. So in this case, we are adding up the first, the second, and the third observations and dividing it by three. Well, there are no other population parameters in there. So yes, this is a statistic. So this is a statistic. And actually, it looks like it's the average of the first three things taken from the sample. Again, this one is saying find the maximum of all of the ones taken from the sample. In other words, find the tallest person that would have been in year 13. And yet this is a statistic because it doesn't have any population parameters in there at all. This one that we've got, we are, it looks like we're doing kind of a measure of, I don't know what this would be, we're subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation and it's squared. But look, we've got some population parameters that are in here. So because of these population parameters that we have here and here, this is an example of something that is not a statistic. Remember that statistics need to not have any population parameters associated with them. Um, and so this one is not a population, uh, is not a statistic. This last one that we've got here looks like we are taking all of the, the ones that we have in our sample from 1 to n and we're summing them up. In other words, we're taking all of these and summing them up and we're dividing it by how many there are. Now, n is not a population parameter. It's just how many things there are in the sample. So this last one is an example of a statistic. And we can see in particular, if we're adding them all up and dividing it by how many there are, this is obviously the definition of the mean that we've got here. This is X bar. Notice how I've said this is X bar, capital X bar, and not mu. Mu is the population. This is for the, um, the statistic. This is for the sample that we've got. So it's not mu, but it is this one. And hopefully later on what we're going to see is there is an association between these two things, which we will explore. Okay, we're very quickly going to look at just one final bit to do with sampling distributions of statistics. So the sampling distribution of a statistic is the probability distribution of that statistic. It describes how that statistic can vary when different samples are taken. I'll explain this with this example here to hopefully get you a bit more of an idea of what we're talking about. But we're saying, you know, if you're just taking some samples from a distribution, what would these particular statistics have as their own distributions as well? I think it'll make more sense with this example that we've got. So the weights and grams of apples are normally distributed with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of four that we've got here. So I think kind of straight away, I'm just going to say that the weights of the apples have a normal distribution with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of four. So obviously that comes up as four squared when we write this. And it says a random sample of size 25 is taken and the statistics R and T are calculated as follows. Now, I just want you to think to yourself, 
um actually this isn't this isn't going to be the case but um because it didn't say this is the maximum and this is the minimum i was thinking oh what does r represent and i thought oh maybe r looks like it represents the range but it's not it's not the maximum and the minimum it's just the 25th um, one that's picked and the first one that is picked so it's not the range but it is saying here that we're going to take the 25th apple that was selected and we will subtract the weight of the first apple that was selected we're going to find out what the sampling distribution of R is. So, oh, they've used the letter X, so I guess I should also use the letter X instead. Um, so, I should have said that, that this was X. Um, we're going to find the sampling distributions of R and T. So, R is X25 minus X1. So, that means that R is the same as... R is going to have a distribution, sorry for the normal distribution of these things being subtracted, okay? So that would be the mean of this one, subtract the mean of this one. This is the combinations of random variables from the previous chapter. So it would be mu minus mu. Now, even, they're being, even though they're being subtracted, remember that for the variance, we always add the variance. So the variance will be four squared plus four squared, which just means that the sampling distribution of R will be zero, and 4 squared plus 4 squared is 16 plus 16 and 32 that we've got there. So this should make sense that if we are taking two of these apples and we're subtracting their weight, we would expect on average that the mean would be zero, right? Because we were expecting them from this normal distribution that they are on average going to give zero. But the variation, the variance has increased because we're adding or subtracting two apples that we have there. And then for t that we've got, because t is equal to all of these different things, when we do the standard distribution for t, the sorry, the sampling distribution for t, we have got 25 of the means being added up. And we know from the previous chapter, this would mean that we would have 25 mu for this part. And we've also got 25 lots of the 4 squared that we have here. So there would be 25 lots of 4 squared. So I can just say that the sampling distribution for t is going to be 25 mu, and then grabbing my calculator, 25 multiplied by 16, which is 400. And 400 is 20 squared. So I can write it as 20 squared like this. So we've got these sampling distributions of r and t now, and you'll see how these kinds of things do get used a little bit more as we go through this, the rest of this chapter. So that's kind of like a little introduction about some terminology and about how I'm going to structure this chapter. But really in the next video is where things get going because we start thinking about what an estimator is and why we even want to learn about it.